Today, we are going to deal with literal equations because I guess they said a bajillion variables would scare people too much. I don't know. So, okay, an equation I want to write lots of, but I won't. I'll, again, I'll be more academic. An equation with multiple variables. So, literal equations are going to come into play whenever you're using a formula of any type. And this is going to be applicable in a whole bunch of different places. We got velocity here. So, I mean, you can get into stuff with engineering. You can get into stuff with physics. You can get into stuff with, like, math and business with interest and things like that. If you have some different information than just plain old... Well, I have distance and time. Well, what if I don't have distance and time? What if I know the velocity and I know the time and I need to figure out how far of a distance I'm going to be going? We can do that a little bit easier with literal equations. So even though a lot of the ones we're going to do today are more just to get you into mode, we'll be able to find some examples of this too and see where it could actually apply. So let me move down here. So solve the equation for m. Here's the good news. We're still going to do the same stuff that we would do for regular Algebra 1 stuff. It just looks weird because instead of a variable and a bunch of numbers, it's all variables. So simple as, hey, I'm dividing m by n. What's the opposite? Multiply. And the only thing I really got to be careful of here is remembering when I multiply over here, I'm not distributing it. It's just canceling that out. <laughs> M equals on. I wonder what off equals. I don't know. So off equals undefined. Maybe. Maybe. So that really, again, you're like, okay. Now, Harvey, we know you well enough. To know that as we're doing this, they're not all going to be this easy. You're right. You're right. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that that's not true. What I am going to tell you is this, though. Little things to make sure. Like here, it could be really tempting to just write HK. We've got to make sure that plus stays with. They're not like terms. They're not both H's, so I can't put them together. So that's the type of little stuff that I'm going to be more interested in you watching out for. Other than that, it's like Hardy's not even talking anymore. He's just writing stuff. Well, these first few, especially our one-steppers, I don't think we're going to have to deal with as much. It's going to be as big of a problem. It's these last three that get a little more interesting. There might be a couple on the practice I want to take a peek at with you, just to be sure we've got things on a good track. All right. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can finish it off strong then. All right, solve for x. Now, this time it's a little more interesting because I have to get ax alone before I can get x alone. We're going to plus it. Perfect, bless you. What's the last step? Divide by A. Divide by A. Oh, close, close. But even when we do make the mistakes, that's helping with learning and stuff. So, hey, we get those figured out now, we get better. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, this one I'll, I'll stay more quiet on. Solve the equation for G. Okay. Nice. Okay. You have multiple options here. Actually, I'm going to split. I'm going to split this one because we have options. So, one of our options, let me rewrite this. Because I want to see if we end up in the same place. All right, so if we divide by 3. So whoosh, there those go. That also eliminates, I'm going to leave it as 14 thirds since it didn't commit nice. 
Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we're going decimally, and I don't know if that's going to be any good. Okay. So we have done all the steps correctly, and I am fine with that. It might not be the most fun if I had to go plug a number in for H because now, oh, now I got a fraction. Now I got a calculator, though, so it may not be too bad. What's another option I may have at the start of this problem? Okay, let's, let's see if we end up in the same place. So if we distribute the 3 first. So let's see, okay, we're solving for G. What would be next? Close. That's going to be my last step. How do I get this out of there? Okay, so we'll oppo there. Nope, we cannot combine those. You're right. Now, let's see. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. Same thing. Even if I would have left this as a big fraction on the right side, 14 plus 3h divided by 3 and just left it, period, that's fine. So... That's just kind of a heads up if you look at a key later or you're looking at something like, wait, I got this. Hardy's got 14 plus 3H over 3. Is mine wrong? No. We just didn't split it up. We left it in one big fraction. So that's cool that we can find two different ways to get to the answer with the exact same problem. Nice. All right. Challenge time for a moment. I'm going to freeze frame. Try out number six. Now, this is this is interesting. If, if we get stuck, it's okay. It's not a bad thing. It just kind of look like, ooh, we got E in lots of places here. So give it a run. And let's see how many different ways we can all come up with doing this, because we might have several. There. Let's see. There's a couple ways this answer could go up that could work really well. Another couple of moments here to see what you get. We'll see how many options we got here. Now, I didn't even think of this. Your answer actually could be a little different than this as well and still be okay. If, let's say you subtracted the 5e to the other side instead, your signs may be the opposite of mine. You may have, what, negative 1 third f minus 8 thirds? That's a possibility. No, wait. No, because we saw it's divided by negative. Take back what I just said. <laughs> delete, delete. That is not true. Um, but again, the big fraction is fine. Having it in little pieces separately is fine. As long as I make sure it's in pieces. That I divided both of these by three and not just the eight. Because sometimes that can be something we can forget. But other than that, it shouldn't be anything that's going to be too terribly bad on that front. So, here's what we'll do. And then I just got one quick reminder announcement, and then we'll, we'll get you down to business here. So, we're playing here on 6 and 7p with the literal equations. 
I don't think, I want to look at one thing. I should. I should have completed that thought. I go. I don't think, and then I stopped. That that probably wasn't my best um, uh, my best idea. Actually, I think we're actually going to be okay on this. Um, try out these on six and seven p. We're going to play. We might play a little of this tomorrow. We might, if we make a group decision, we might run into straight into the quiz preview if we're feeling good with everything. We'll we'll check the start of class and see how we're feeling. But do make sure.